And what did Monbiot write in The Guardian in response to the Fukushima disaster? <laughs> he wrote a story entitled, Why Fukushima Made Me Stop Worrying and Love Nuclear Power. Uh, and in this article, he says that critics of the nuclear industry have, quote, wildly exaggerated the dangers of radioactive pollution. So this is a self-proclaimed environmentalist saying that radioactive pollution, which makes the soil infertile for 24,000 years, is nothing to worry about. <laughs> and that quote is going to come back to haunt him in light of the fact that we now have Reactor 3 spewing this... Uh, mox uranium plutonium mix but here's another quote from the article as a result of the disaster at fukushima i am no longer nuclear neutral i now support the technology writes Monbiot. so god forbid should anyone point out the dangers of you know catastrophes that can devastate whole regions make them environmentally inhabitable for decades radiation that causes nearly a million people to get cancer in the case of Chernobyl and fertility rates in Europe plunging through the floor as a result of the fallout. No, according to Monbiot, the real threat is those smokestacks emitting the harmless life-giving gas CO2. So I ask Monbiot, how many people have coal plants killed? How many rivers and fields of coal plants turned into radioactive swamps as the regions around Chernobyl were in 1986. And yet here's Monbiot, you know, lauding the virtues of nutritious plutonium like Ann Coulter and saying that we need more of it, if only to stop the construction of those dastardly clean burning coal plants that, God forbid, should allow the scum human population to keep their evil automobiles fueled without going bankrupt with the gas prices going through the roof because of oil going up day by day with the Obama administration's publicly admitted war on the coal plant industry. And of course, the blackouts in recent months um, attributed to that in no small part. So George Monbiot has basically confirmed his position as the ultimate eco-hypocrite and proved once again that these people don't give a damn about real environmental catastrophes if they can't exploit them for their own control freak ends. Two questions really there. The first is, uh, was Chernobyl a disaster and how many people have died as a result of it? And the second is, how does Fukushima compare to Chernobyl? Well, we start with the first one, which is the Chernobyl um, question. The, 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 the million deaths that has have been uh, put out by Alexei Yablokov and his colleagues in that document that you that you mentioned, um, which was published by the prestigious New York Academy of Sciences and has been peer reviewed, is almost certainly correct. And in fact, I think it's probably conservative. I would I would say that on the basis of the research I've done, which is quite quite a lot of research, and I have been working with Alexei Yablokov on this too. Um, I, I would say that it's probably more than a million as a result of Chernobyl. Um, in in uh, in Europe and in uh, um, in the ex-Soviet Union territories. So that's the first thing, and it's easy to show that there are lots and lots of peer-reviewed papers. Uh, now, when the United Nations and the International Atomic Energy Agency and the WHO talk, they ignore all of the scientific papers which say that which show that there are these deaths. So they just select the numbers of uh, scientific papers, uh, the ones that, that agree with them. Um, and they ignore all of the others. So that's how it works. And the WHO, I have to say, has signed an agreement with the International Atomic Energy Agency in 1959 to leave research on the health effects of radionuclides to the IAEA, who, whose remit is the development of nuclear power. So this is a terrible bias. Now, the second question... So, all right, so Chernobyl was very serious, and it caused lots of deaths. Second question is, where does Fukushima lie in this? Now, I have to say that Fukushima is probably going to be worse, although slightly different. Uh, and Fukushima is unfolding now, so we don't know the end of it. But, but the IAEA themselves, who are not renowned for, the, for telling the truth or, or for... Or for um, of being very direct about this, have already published in their various bulletins the levels of contamination at different distances from the Fukushima plant. It's all on the internet, you can see all this. Uh, and the latest bulletin, which was published today, says that the, the, the concentration on the ground, the contamination on the
the ground out to um, out to uh, 32 kilometres has been measured at almost five megabecquerels per square metre. Now th that is actually ten times higher than the Chernobyl exclusion zone. So that's the first thing you have to say is that out to 30 kilometres, and the Chernobyl exclusion zone is 30 kilometres, so they're strictly comparable. The Fukushima contamination is ten times higher per square metre. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that the contamination out to 78 kilometres, uh, also published by the UN, is one megabecquerels per square, per square metre, or as high as, and so that is twice as high as the level in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, where everybody was, um, you will recall, where the Soviet authorities, after three days, evacuated everybody. Now, we are now two weeks from the beginning of this, and people certainly haven't been evacuated uh, in, in the areas where, where the contamination is coming down. And the reason why is because there are just too many people and there's nowhere to put them. So with Chernobyl, uh, the, the nearest large area of, um, the nearest large city was Kiev in the Ukraine. Um, but, but luckily, the, the radiation went north and it went northwest. And so it didn't really go over Kiev to any large extent. But here we have radiation going south, uh, and we've plotted all of this on the on the on the big computer of the NOAA, the American um, computer, which plots particle movements. And it's quite easy to show that, that this stuff from Fukushima, this radioactivity from Fukushima, all these particles and the iodine and the cesium and the plutonium and the uranium and the tellurium-132 and all of these isotopes are going to Tokyo, which has a population of 36 million. It's the, it's, as I understand it, it's the largest concentration of human beings in any city on Earth. So this is why Fukushima is so bad. First of all, there's more contamination in the, in, in the area. And secondly, it's sitting right on top. Of a, of a very large population center. And uh, and also, you know, of course, it'll get spread around as people move away, as they drive out of the area, as the airplanes fly away from Tokyo and land in other countries. Um, people will be carrying the, the, the radioactivity with them. Worse, then, is the short answer. <laughs> That's quite harrowing to hear, but um, st still on Chernobyl. I mean, in the days following Chernobyl, children in Belarus were told that you know, splashing around in puddles of yellow rain was perfectly harmless uh, because it was merely pollen, when in reality, as we later learned, it was, it was in fact radioactive dust. Uh, with people in Tokyo now reporting yellow rain and this yellowy substance on the ground, are they right to trust Japanese government assurances that this yellow substance is merely pollen? I wouldn't trust anything that the, that the authorities said on this issue. They've consistently lied. They've consistently downplayed the problem, and they continue to do so. So, and when it when it comes to the nuclear industry, uh, they seem to be able to cast some kind of spell over human beings. They they, they, they say all these things, and and uh, they say this is safe, and this is the same as uh, you know flying to America, or this is the same as uh, eating Brazil nuts. All the all these inappropriate comparisons, and in fact also inappropriate comparisons with natural background radiation. Um, they will give you, they will say this is the same as a chest x-ray, this is the same as the as dose that you would get in a year. These are all external radiation measurements and they're not comparable to internal radiation of the type that, that would cause the yellow puddles or actually, you know, at least you can see the yellow puddles. I mean, uh, the, the type that, that is floating about in the air and is completely invisible because people don't have eyes that can detect this stuff. So everything seems perfectly normal and you have to rely upon the, upon the authorities to tell you if it's dangerous. And their, and their estimation of its danger is based on an outdated and obsolete and, and completely discredited radiation risk model, which is based on the atomic bomb. As soon as it is safe for specially protected crews to get out into the open, these highly trained civil defense radiation detection teams will make a thorough check of radiation levels and characteristics. Those facts will be relayed to you by radio as fast as they come into civil defense headquarters in your area. Information from the radiation monitoring teams will be combined and analyzed by experts manning a central radiation control point. These experts, who know just how fast harmful radiation reduces in force, can predict when it will be safe for people to come out of shelters and resume normal tasks. 
and it's completely invisible because people don't have eyes that can detect this stuff. So everything seems perfectly normal, and you have to rely upon the upon the authorities to tell you if it's dangerous. And their and their estimation of its danger is based on an outdated and obsolete and and completely discredited radiation risk model, which is based on the atomic bomb. Uh, and, and has and has absolutely nothing to say about internal radionuclide exposures. Uh, and as I say, there are loads and loads of pa papers, scientific papers in the peer review literature, which show that these internal radionuclide exposures are up to a thousand times more dangerous than the dose would suggest. So if they say the dose is X, multiply it by about 500, and you're about right in terms of the dose. And we've published on the ICE, on the website of the Low Level Radiation Campaign, and my own organisation, the ECRR. So you can go to either of those LLRC.org or Euradcom.org, and you can find a simple method of calculating the likely cancer risk, the cancer outcome of the exposure at any particular dose that they publish. To Japan now, though, their radiation levels in the seawater near the Fukushima plant continue to rise. They're now more than three and a half thousand times higher than normal. Radioactive materials also been detected in soil at the facility. Japan's government has described the situation as serious and unpredictable. Workers have been unsuccessfully trying to restore the plant's cooling system in what's now the worst atomic crisis since Chernobyl. There's been some debate, too, over whether there are any similarities between the two events. Let's uh, discuss that. I'm joined by Professor Christopher Busby of the European Committee on Radiation Risk. Sir, thanks for being with us tonight. Initially, when this disaster started, we were told, according to most media reports, that it was all very unlike the terrible events we witnessed in Chernobyl. You're saying different. Why? Well, I said right from the beginning that this was a, a Chernobyl-level disaster because it was quite clear to me at that time, having looked at the explosions, that there were ma major problems with those reactor pressure vessels, and it now turns out that there are, and that at least one of them is cracked and there's fuel all over the place. Um, the, the similarities with Chernobyl are quite, are quite real, and in fact, in, in a way, this is a much worse accident than Chernobyl, and the reason is that there are a lot of people living nearby. The population of the 100 kilometer zone is about 3 million, and out to 200 kilometers there's another 7 million people. And the, and the contamination out to those distances, according to the IAEA, is about one megabecquerel per square uh, meter. Now, now, that's an awful lot of radiation. That's one million disintegrations per second per square meter of land, which is about twice as high as the Chernobyl exclusion zone. So there are going to be an awful lot of deaths and awful lot of cancers. Professor, can you just clarify for me, the reason that most people, most of the officials said in the first place this wasn't like Chernobyl is because, unlike Chernobyl, there was containment over the uh, reactors here in all of these. Uh, we, we think they're still intact, most of them anyway. and. Uh, at those reactors so that's why people were saying it's nowhere near as bad as Chernobyl there was no huge large-scale explosion you're saying this is different I just want to clarify it well anyone anyone who looked at those video the video footage of those explosions wouldn't have said that there was no large-scale explosion the well they said that's a hydrogen explosion not a nuclear explosion well, it was a hydrogen explosion in Chernobyl as well, actually, so it was the same thing, although there have been some questions about whether it was a hydrogen explosion then. But the other point that you've missed, or that people missed, is that there were a huge number of spent fuel rods sitting right on top of the reactor. So when it exploded, and everybody saw it exploding, all of those fuel rods went up in the air. And anyway, as we now know, it has melted down. So I don't think it suddenly melted down yesterday. Is this I a think worse... that that thing was split right from the beginning. Is, is this a worst case scenario then, as, as you see it? Really, could it get worse than this? And what about the poor people that have to clean this up? They were called liquidators in Chernobyl. Even 